Well, fuel supplier Ampol, which officially rebranded from Caltex in May, reported a statutory net loss of $630 million, of course, hit by a slump in fuel demand from COVID-19. Total fuel sales over the year dropped by 14%. For more on that, I spoke to CEO Matt Halliday. Matthew Halliday, thanks for joining Business Weekend. Now, of course, a business like Ampol was always going to be severely affected by the coronavirus recession through a slump in demand. Uh, you have presided over a $626 million loss, uh, yet the markets have marked you down. The share price was down just over 3%. How do you explain that? Look, I think we've des delivered a, a really resilient result uh, in difficult conditions. So clearly refining margins have been heavily impacted, aviation demand's been heavily impacted, and retail fuel demand has been impacted through the COVID restrictions. Uh, so I think the business has performed uh, with a focus on efficiency and cost um, pretty strongly through, uh, through a challenging period. Now, just on that issue of borders, what is your best forecast of when the international borders will reopen and indeed the domestic state borders too? Look, I think uh, governments have got a difficult balance in managing the, uh, the impacts of the health crisis and the impacts on the economy. Uh, I firmly believe we've got to find a way of learning to live with this virus. Um, we've got to take uh, the actions on health as the governments are taking, um, but we've got to balance that against the impact on the economy and uh, certainly the border closures domestically um, play a role there. And so that's going to be uh, going to need to be sort of calibrated into the response on international borders. I can't see them coming down for uh, for some time. I don't suppose you have a particular you know per month or per quarter cost of these border closures for Ampol. So in terms of uh, the aviation demand, our, our business is more heavily geared to international travel, uh, given the, uh, the fuel usage for, uh, for longer international flights. It clearly does have an impact where last year aviation volumes were 19% of our business and uh, they're down very heavily uh, uh, in the first half. So we also see demand mix shifting within our business. So people uh, going on more driving holidays provides a bit of an offset to some of the aviation demand that we've lost. Now, just on that issue of domestic fuel demand, you noted in your results uh, that there had been somewhat of a recovery uh, kind of following the first phase of restrictions. But of course, now Victoria has introduced lockdown uh, 2.0, so to speak. What are you seeing in Victoria so far for the month of August? Yes, what we're seeing overall in our convenience retail uh, demand numbers is uh, July we were down around 11%, so we had seen good recovery uh, across the various states. Uh, that's now shifted August month to date to about 18% as a result of Victoria moving into the, uh, the more severe stage four restrictions. That plunge in global oil prices has been remarkable this year. It's down around $40 a barrel. Indeed, briefly, it was negative. Uh, what is your view on uh, the evolution of oil prices for the next six months? Look, very hard to predict. Uh, I think the impact of COVID uh, means that uh, we're going to see uncertain and volatile markets. We've seen that in oil markets, as you've said. We've seen that in terms of refining margins, which we're impacted by. So, uh, from our point of view, we just continue to make sure we've got a very strongly positioned balance sheet. That's prudent, uh, given where we are at the moment, and a continued fo focus on, on cost and efficiency right across our business. Now, just on the issue of Bowser prices, though, of course, you have more control over those. Uh, how do you see those evolving? Yeah, so look, uh, obviously the, the oil price is, uh, is an important component. The supply chain costs uh, to, get, uh, uh, to get the product to market is an important component. The exchange rate is, a, is an important component. So obviously the, the strengthening dollar uh, that we've seen in, uh, in recent weeks plays a role as well, um, as well as the fixed cost base that you see on a site. So as you see really severe levels of demand destruction, there's still non-oil related costs on a site that, uh, that need to be recovered if a site is to, uh, to remain profitable. Now the federal government of course has introduced a raft of support for business. Have any of your divisions received any JobKeeper payments and if so how much? Well, look, I think JobKeeper is an important program. We have, uh, we have uh, access JobKeeper for our refinery and our aviation business, so only in the areas of the business that have been really severely impacted by, uh, by the demand falls. Uh, it's in the order of $2 million. So not a, not a huge contribution in the, in the context of the business, but uh, we, have, uh, we, have, uh, we think it's an important program and we have uh, used JobKeeper in the areas of the business where the heavy impacts have been seen. Many commentators for some time now have said that Australia doesn't keep sufficient fuel stocks. Uh, the government seems to be more worried about the issue. In what ways can Ampol help on this policy front? 
Yeah, look, we, we uh, remain uh, of the view that we safely and reliably uh, supply our customers and we've got a long-standing track record uh, in that regard. Can understand the government's thinking about fuel reserves more urgently, as you say, in, in, response, uh, in response to COVID. So we're actively engaging. We're the market leader. We're a proudly Australian independent company and we've got a leading infrastructure network. Uh, so we're ready, willing and able and engaging with the government around how we can play a role. And I think uh, in terms of what the government uh, is focused on, finding the most efficient solution and ensuring there's no additional cost impost on the consumer or on business given the environment that we're in are a couple of the important priorities. You've also been selected by Transport New South Wales to help operate four highway service centres around Sydney. Uh, just on the broader issue of car travel, how do you see that evolving in this new era of work from home? So entirely uh, unpredictable, I would say, but what, what you can guarantee is high, high, uh, high volume sites um, on, the right, uh, uh, on the right sort of trunk systems are going to continue to see very strong demand. In fact, as people aren't travelling as much on aeroplanes, um, we expect domestic holidays and people travelling around uh, domestically is actually going to support volume for high quality sites and these are ultra high quality sites on New South Wales highway systems. So we're, uh, we're very pleased that Ampol uh, can, bring those, uh, can bring those sites uh, through a development phase.